Yes, thank you. My energy has Thank you. 
It's wonderful to be here in Inuvik. Thank you very much, Nakamik to Dwayne Smith and the Inuvialuit Regional Corporation and the city of Inuvik for, uh, town of Inuvik for your warm welcome. Uh, the feast last night was um, a huge highlight of, of our time here and the food was excellent. Uh, Dwayne, as the host um, region here, I'd like to call on you just for a few words before we pass it to uh, our elder for an opening pr uh, open prayer and remarks. Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome, Uglami, Ugla. Good, good morning, everybody. Uh, I know a lot of you say you come from the Natsiavut, Nunavik, uh, Nunavut, but the moves I saw last night, I think your blood is from my region. <laughs> I think all of you are in the valley by heart. <laughs> if you weren't, you aren't now, but uh, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. And uh, for those of you that got to take the tour to Tuktoyaktuk and uh, get to see the new sites, but uh, Welcome everybody again. We look forward to the deliberations, the discussions uh, for the betterment of our people, uh, wherever they might reside, and for us to work very closely together uh, moving forward. But uh, welcome and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the week here. I'd like to call on Lillian Elias for our opening prayer. On the agenda, we have welcoming remarks by an elder. Duane, was there an elder you wanted to introduce? On the agenda, there's welcoming remarks by an elder and, um, okay, I'll come back. <clears throat> we'll proceed to the approval of the agenda. Jerry? And people are excited about the upfix that we keep hearing about. So <laughs> that'll be for the evening activities. Uh, I'd like to move to the approval of the agenda. The agenda is in your binders under tab one. Are there any comments, questions, uh, amendments to the agenda? Andy Pirti. I move. Komik. PJ. I'll second. Can I get uh, all in favor of the approval of the agenda as moved by Andy Pirti and seconded by PJ Akiago? All in favor? Okay. We have a question on the motion. Dwayne? Uh, just a reminder that uh, the financials again are only on the on, uh, one, one section of it and they're trying to get the rest of it. So. Uh, just so that everybody knows that and you're moving this 
with that understanding that the additions to the package will be brought in. Right, so we were in the midst of the approval. Uh, can I once again see hands of those for approving the um, motion to adopt the agenda? All in favor, okay. All opposed? An abstention? All right, passed unanimously, Nakumik. Item number two is under tab two. It's the election of directors. We uh, um, at our AGM elect our directors for the year and also then uh, elect the, the members here that are, um, that are on behalf of the four Inuit Nunangat regions for the AGM. Perhaps at this time, we can go around the room and introduce ourselves to one another before we go into the, um, the approval of the resolutions in relation to this item. I'm Natan Obed, I'm the president of Inuit Tapirit Kanatsumi and I'll be chairing the, uh, the AGM. David Ningyewan Kibale Inui Katuk Jikhati Gia Nga Yopka Nga Kanga Senang Mi Koyin Na Mi Lutama Tunga Ni Tunga Sukti Tau Chia Gatta Inu Win Mi Dwayne Smith, uh, Chair and CEO in the Valley Regional Corporation. Eddie Dillon with the Indian Valley Regional Corporation. Gerald Glangisak, uh, IRC delegate. Repika Kadlok, Ang Yakamu in a Pauku Tikunukana Dami. Mary Binky Anderson, Vice President, National Inuit Youth Council. Mary, I'm a bit of a cancer, you are male, Matthew Bikon, the Kitaki Langa. To do that, we'll lay her doll on me, Matiaki Matsamaki, Nakula. Darlene Partridge, Makibik Delegate. Kumik, and thanks for your hospitality, Duane, and uh, the rest of the Inavalid uh, people. You are, we had a really good time last night. Uh, um, <clears throat> if you think uh, it looked like uh, I was uh, had the blood of uh, Inavalid peoples, I'm a good actor then. <clears throat> but uh, Inu. Good morning, Gerald Asavak, a Minister of Health and Social Development, Ordinary Member of Upper Lake Melville, New Nazi Government. Uh, good morning, uh, Tyler Edmonds, Minister of Finance, Human Resources, Information Technology, uh, New Nazi Government. Again, I wanted to thank uh, the Nuvialuit Regional Corporation for their hospitality uh, last evening. I was fortunate enough to uh, go on the ride to Tuktiatuk and uh, give some updates. Uh, so my, my belly is happy from last evening and, and from the updates. Um, we have a very beautiful uh, landscape here. And uh, thank you once again for the warm welcome. Johannes 
everyone will uh, return to item number two and the election of the Inuit Thapri Kanatami directors. The ITK bylaws require the corporation to put forward a slate of candidates for, for the four director positions at each AGM. This slate must include a nominee from each member land claim organization. The bylaws require the members to vote on the slate of candidates at the annual general meeting. In resolution A1808, uh, the uh, corporation puts forward the following slate of candidates. Dwayne Smith, Chair and Chief Executive Officer in New Valley Regional Corporation, Luki Kutir, Nunavutungavik um, Incorporated, Charlie Watt, Makivik Corporation, and Johannes Lamp, Minatsia Root. This is done at every AGM, and it basically allows for uh, uh, the organization to fulfill its obligations under the, um, the Societies Act. Uh, and also then is very clear about who the directors of, of the organization are. Are there any questions on the item? If there are no questions, I'll look for a motion to approve. David Ningunen moves, and I have a seconder. Tyler Edmonds, all in favor of the motion? Opposed? Abstentions? Passed unanimously. Nakomik. The next item on the agenda under tab three is the 2017 ITK AGM minutes. We'll do this in two parts. We will uh, First, look for uh, or look for a resolution to to approve the minutes from the last uh, AGM, and then we will talk through some of the action items that uh, were directed by the AGM to ITK to work on over the year. But I'm hoping to uh, uh, separate the two. So, if we could have uh, consideration of the minutes, and if there are any amendments to the minutes, we will. Uh, we'll make them and then we'll move into the action items discussion after the consideration and hopefully the approval of the minutes. I'd like to open up the discussion in relation to the minutes. Are there any questions, comments, additions um, in relation to the, uh, the content of the minutes? If there are no concerns in relation to the, um, the, the minutes as they have been presented, uh, Dwayne? Uh, thank you, Nathan. Um, on page five, it says that IRC will share their cruise ship uh, strategy uh, with NTI, but unfortunately it's been delayed and we haven't uh, had it finalized yet. It's uh, still in draft form and it's uh, 
we have our own board meetings next week and I need to get the, my board's permission to send it to their communities first for them to review and then once that's finalized, we can uh, share it with the MTI. But uh, at the same time on that subject matter, I guess I have a request because I know Nunavut, uh, I think more, more than Nunavut government is working on one and uh, we'll try to get a hold of that copy because it's uh, anything that with best practices that we can ad adopt from theirs would be helpful to us. So that's the status of where we are with that and we apologize for the delay. Uh, I do have a question in regards to number nine, not page nine, but subject number nine, Indigenous Guardians Network. It's not on the agenda again, but if we can get the brief update in regards to the status of that, uh, the discussions with the federal government, because uh, we've been wanting to get uh, active on that uh, subject for a while, as well as uh, the Arctic policy framework, the status of that. Uh, I know our, our key, our point person has been working on that, but if we can have a quick discussion on that as well, just because of the importance of that uh, with the federal government. And uh, I'll leave it at that, thank you. Thank you, thank you Duane. Uh, the points on the Guardians and the APF are noted and we'll uh, have that conversation when we talk about the action items. Are there any other comments in relation to the minutes? If there are none, I would look for a motion to approve the minutes from the 2017 AGM. PG Akiago moves. Andy Pirti seconds. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Carried unanimously. Nakumik. We have Elizabeth Ford, the executive director at ITK here uh, to work through some of the, um, the work that has been done between the AGM last year and um, the AGM this year in relation some, to some of the items that were discussed last year. Elizabeth? Yeah, make. So the uh, first action item from the September 2017 meeting <clears throat> was uh, in relation to an issue arising from the presidential reports. So ITK was directed to explore ways to keep the Inuit Research Advisory Committee active for losing their funding with the ending of ArcNet. Uh, the update to that action is that funds for Inuit, including the Inuit Advisory Committee, have been included as part of the Arctic Next July 19, 2018 proposal to NCE. So we'll wait for the funding for, for Arctic Net. In relation to monitoring, tracking, legislative reviews, that is ongoing. There has been a bit of a break over the summer um, with no new legislation, but that will continue again in the fall. Under the next item, National Inuit Strategy on Research, ITK to recommend a Minister of Science hire an Inuit advisor, a resolution to be drafted by the board. So this is ongoing. A letter was sent to the Minister of Science. This is also a part of the uh, National Inuit Strategy on Research items to be addressed under there. So that's ongoing. We still haven't received a response, but it has been requested. Under the Indigenous Guardians program, so we did request an Inuit specific allocation from the Indigenous Guardians program. I was sent, a letter was sent and discussed with the Environment Minister, as well as the Office of the Prime Minister, and Inuit specific funds will be identified. But maybe I'll let Will give an update on that program generally and the discussions. Will, David. Thank you. Um, what we know to date is that uh, there has been an Inuit specific allocation. We have not received confirmation on the amount of the allocation as yet. Um, and right now what Environment Canada is struggling with is essentially how to move the money um, out of Environment Canada um, to regions. Um, and so they're basically seeking guidance in terms of how best to do that. 
um, presumably for support of um, either Treasury Board's commission. Um, so that's the current state of play. There has been a lot of back and forth about Environment Canada requesting proposals for more information um, from ITK or for regions, but I think it's fair to say that they either ought to or do have a very good sense for, um, for how the monies are, are proposed to be used. It is ITK's uh, understanding that Environment Canada will work directly with each land claim organization. And that includes the specific amount of funding um, for each region. This was uh, a conversation at a, 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 the last ITK board meeting. And we have every hope that Environment Canada will, uh, will come through with individual bilateral funding agreements for guardians programs for each of the four land claim regions. All right. The Before we move on, Dwayne had a question on the. Well, I think we, we need to have some discussion on some of these things. So there's further clarity, I guess, and understanding uh, as far as I know, and I'm looking to uh, Bob, my, staff person that the Environment Canada has reached out to us yet, but I'm not fully aware of that. Uh, I think there needs to be some kind of central coordination with ITK's involvement in this to some level so that, because oh, I'm tying all this into our national strategy on research. So if we're all gonna be piecemealed off by four, four regions, uh, then that data, this crucial data that we see under this guardianship program is only going to reside in our region. But I think some of it is uh, broader, like the impacts of climate change as an example, that should be shared amongst the region so that there's a coordination of awareness, information, reporting, lobbying, uh, that ITK could do as a part of its implementation of the research strategy. Um, that's the whole intent of it is to get us to be coordinated on certain issues such as that. And I'm concerned that uh, if this minister who seems to be very slow and does a good talk, uh, does a good dance, I guess, uh, is uh, not moving quick enough because we have to have this into the treasury board like in a few weeks. So what you're suggesting is that each region needs to put its, uh, what it wants to propose as an implementation plan for its guardianship program with the budget. Uh, and this is coming to us like, do we have to do this and have it in within a couple of weeks roughly? give or take for it to be part of the treasury board. And if we're not coordinated, I mean, uh, in this regard, then it's, uh, I, I think we're just being shuffled around here. Uh, that's my concern. And I think if there is an allocation of the Inuit funds for this program, then let us know what it is so that we know what kind of budget we're playing with. And then we can start to put together uh, our objectives. And uh, I mean, we could submit anything and everything, but then at the end of the day, they're gonna come back and say, well, these are the parameters and you guys are outside of that. I mean, it's just this department and this minister uh, doesn't have their act together in my view. And we need to be continuing to push that. And that's ITK's role on our behalf to do that. And this, each of our regions starts to do that, but then it becomes very time consuming. I'll let, we'll add more to that, but there actually is interest on the part of Environment Canada in ITK continuing to be a part of that coordination. Um, so for ITK, we're, we are, what we have said is we're able to participate as much as the regions would like us to in terms of over, not overseeing, but um, coordinating with the region. So, if that is the request of the regions, the Environment uh, Canada Department and Minister would be happy to have us help to that coordination. Uh, 
the other thing is that um, ITK's environment in particular has really been pressing um, Environment Canada hard for the actual amount of the allocation to be released. The reason for that is that um, Environment Canada is interested in any number of discussions about um, governance of the funds and coordination of the program, but it's um, in some senses uh, irresponsible and nonsensical to have those kinds of conversations without some indication of what the amounts are. Um, so there is some degree of pressure there. Um, I'm just not sure to what extent it means the early release of the funds at this point. And that's basically what we're really fighting for now is um, identification of the amount and, and quick release of the funds. Um, and then governance discussions can occur after the fact. Permic by the Andy. Thank you, Nathan. I just want to make you guys aware that uh, as uh, Charlie had uh, contacted the minister's department and uh, they had a good discussion regarding this and there was a good reception on the federal side and there's a plans and uh, there could be money put aside for Nunavik uh, regarding the guardians of uh, indigenous uh, guardians program just for for your update for me candy yeah we in the meeting you come down at the at the party as a magatigo that the good you be man i've got to give a dead to go down the can i have to get there but young in the table government to work from about the regime of minister one man not a ton of nursing on the law what the town san rago one one what the union at the moment uh, 900,000 pounds, uh, Sima Gataman, or you know, Nalem or Atosum, uh, Nirio Tugu, Etne, Kanaya, and Sakanyam in Atana, who two Tigas of Tabu, Kano, Tadro Tio, Imanga, Inu Nupiva, the Rotio Nato, Piva Diana to Dutigo, Tana Utu to give a dead Dutigo, Mapping at Yasima Matova, Tin Roya Ligo Tigia Catal, Catherine Macan, Asso Sima Matana, Kanaya, Nunalem Tigarman, Sima Narama. Nalatia <laughs> HMS Terror and Erebus Mission, what in the Oklahoma Tabuna, Pivado Tosima Manuna, the Nunabum, Naluna Matuna Tam in Yaratakua, Pilarisimal Tabman, the Mutukisigo, San Rago, twenty five million of whom are also available, Canada Limamun. Anuna inu inu no to nalone taolo wan sole so san ga go pile re bad dia yu tak wa ki se anu ni re un apto inu inu na ko tingin ni kana ya ni sakke gum nam na mata na ang ang zo ma yu ga ni ang ngan ik pin ni na ma at taku si mal re so ti go do so ko so ga gum to na ta ko ta ang ngan pa nakumik I think in relation to guardians, we uh, have some clear direction moving forward and ITK will make sure that there is some coordination and that all Inuit regions are working in the same uh, way with Environment Canada. All right, the uh, next action under MMIWG is that ITK was directed to work with MMIWG Missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls in Greece to determine the exact money spent to date. That information was requested, but it has not been received to date. Sorry for interrupting, Elizabeth, but I just want to make one more intervention, I guess, in regards to the uh, funding program. Well, uh, you said that there's funding allocated for the guardianship program, but they don't know how to transfer it, whatever it is that they do internally. Uh, 
we, we've got examples in regards to how we work with Health Canada, INAC, and all these things on how we've done that. Uh, is it possible for you to reach out to them and say that we would like to have these funds secured uh, <coughs> as an allocation, and we can work with them in regards to developing our strategy along with them so that we don't lose out this this allocation uh, in Treasury Board so it doesn't get kicked down the road and we lose another year. Sorry for going back to that, but it's too important. Yes, I believe that that's fine. Johannes? No, uh, Andy, uh, again, like Dwayne says, uh, and the uh, guardian program, we did meet uh, with the minister uh, over a year ago, and uh, and then she talks really good, and and, and she says that uh, what we are asking is is doable, and and, uh, and and she asked us to uh, write in a proposal, and and, and we have done that, uh, to sell agreement, and and we still have not received a response, and. Uh, and we also sent uh, a proposal to uh, have the uh, students, you know, uh, go to the uh, <coughs> National Park uh, at Valley Crossing. Uh, and, and, and again, uh, you know, 2018 season is, you know, it's too late now uh, for a, a program like that to happen. So like Dwayne says, we need to uh, work together to push Push the ministry on, on these issues. Definitely. All right. Under the next item, a ministerial working group on the review of laws and policies related to Indigenous peoples. ITK was to ensure there's any content in the final product by engaging regions for input in the review and give the regions relevant time to review with key staff before responding. This item is ongoing and it still has to be completed. We are working on it, but it hasn't been shared with regions yet. The next item is midterm review of the federal government. During that discussion, there was the request that ITK release a statement post Inuit Crown Partnership Committee meetings to inform Inuit of outcomes. And the same thing should happen after first minister's meeting and other meetings. And so this is ongoing. Statements are released following these meetings by ITK. Under federal announcements on matters related to the Arctic, ITK to work with NTI and IRC on response to Bill C-55, distribute the bill and a draft letter to the Minister of Fisheries and Oceans with, the regional, with regional input. This is yet to be completed. It is again in first draft form and hasn't been shared. And I'll let Will maybe add to that if there is anything that will be completed or completed and shared with regions by the end of August. Under the next item, legalization of marijuana, ITK was asked to have the National Inuit Committee on Health follow up on the legalization of marijuana and keep the board informed. So the update in April 2017, in April 2017, the government of Canada introduced the bill to enact the Cannabis Act to prepare, to provide legal access to cannabis and to control and regulate its production, distribution and sale. And it is expected to come into force during the fall 2018. The National Inuit Committee on Health or NICO has met with the Cannabis Legalization and Regulation Branch of Health Canada in November 2016 and January 2018 to discuss the initial stages of the cannabis legalization and regulation process. ITK is in the process of drafting a proposal to facilitate an Inuit specific engagement process with the Inuit regions to gather information and perspectives on how the legalization and regulation will impact Inuit communities and potential programs and services that could be implemented to help address these impacts. Following yesterday's discussion with the board, we will be doing some follow-up work to see what the options are in relation to regions and their ability to put some limits in place as well. And then the last item is regarding Niliayut 2. 
and the Inuit Nunavut Taimangani projects. The request was made to do voiceovers in Inuktut and incorporate background music from all regions. The Niliayu 2 video version now includes Inuktut voiceovers and background music poems from each region, as does Inuit Nunavut Taimangani. Are there any further questions in relation to the action items that have been presented? If not, thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Duane? Well, I, I suggested uh, because it wasn't in the agenda and it's not in the action items that Will could do his 101 with us on where we are with the Arctic policy framework. I know uh, we our regions have been working on it, but so everybody's on the same page on that subject matter. In a word, we're lost. Um, so I'd like to start by again um, thanking um, each of the regions and particularly the technicians for the input we've um, received to date on um, in the Inuit specific section of the Arctic policy framework. Um, for background, the federal government had broken the framework into four parts, the first part being a policy statement, the second part being identification of, um, say, regional priorities, so provinces, territories, um, and then Inuit. Um, the federal government was engaged in a process, multiple processes of um, co-development on part one, the policy statement, um, through the spring of last year, despite repeated attempts uh, from Inuit to engage with the federal provincial territorial co-development table, um, we were repeatedly rebuffed, um, allegedly because some of the provinces and territories had concerns about um, co-developing with Inuit. This set up an awkward track in the spring of one set of co-development go discussions going on with Inuit and a separate set of uh, co-development discussions going on with the provinces and territories. The reason why that's important is that um, in about April, the federal government decided to try to combine all of the drafts together into one um, just for the policy statement and then set a date of July 23rd um, to present it back uh, both to provinces and territories and to Inuit. What would be presented back would basically be something that's submitted for validation uh, or the validation process, as they called it. Um, it's fair to say that the, um, perhaps unsurprisingly, the kinds of input that they received back from um, ourselves, as well as from uh, provinces and territories, proved or must have proved fairly challenging to combine. Um, the government missed the deadline. While that happened, Northern Affairs was split off in CERNA. Um, and so right now, when I say the Arctic policy framework is sort of um, lost, is um, as of today, at least, my best information is it's maybe in Northern Affairs and possibly in Crown Indigenous Relations. Um, there may or may not be several federal departments that are working on it together. Um, and it seems quite possible and indeed likely that the entire structure of the framework may in fact be changed or at least redrafted to some extent. Um, I'm happy to report that it seems like the provinces and territories are as in the dark as Inuit are, um, although that's kind of cold comfort for me because it means that everybody's basically in the dark and lost. Um, for a path forward on this, um, Inuit had developed right um, with the support of the regional technicians, um, essentially um, the beginnings of the Inuit specific chapter, which contained both um, a chapeau, which outlines um, the Inuit vision for um, development of the Arctic over the next 12 years, as well as potentially the beginnings of a list of signature projects um, that had been the pre um, prescribed format for, for part two of the framework. Um, our plan now is basically to, um, to share it with the federal government and suggest that it's very, very draft language and the hope that if the federal government gets a view of what we're actually thinking of proposing um, as a structure for part two of the framework, they could influence how they actually want to reformat the entire thing. 
Um, and as, as best as I can telepath forward on the content, on the process, uh, we continue to seek information on um, to what extent this file is located within Crown Indigenous Relations and to what extent this file is located um, within Northern Affairs. Um, it's mildly vexing that um, the Minister of Northern and Intergovernmental Affairs hasn't received a mandate letter yet, so we actually don't know for sure. Um, and it's also mildly vexing that um, Crown Indigenous Relations Northern Affairs Organization continues to actually execute most of the work on this. But what I can say is that the reason why the ministerial responsibility is important is that our track record to date on the Arctic policy framework suggests that the most chances that we have to actually influence the process seem to come from the political level. Um, in terms of the bigger issues, but at the same time, um, because it seems like the entire framework may or may not be in flux, it seems logical to try to give um, federal officials some kind of idea of the scope and breadth of what we're actually thinking of proposing in the framework. Um, so I would say that we're lost, uh, but we may have a direction forward, I hope. Well, uh, I know the point person for the federal government has moved on. I just don't know where he's moved to and if that file has gone with him or not, but that's a little disturbing. Uh, maybe it gives us a little bit more time, but I did, uh, I know Bob's our point again for this issue. And uh, I reminded him that uh, many years ago, the ICC created its own Inuit Arctic policy and there's a lot of uh, domestic uh, points that could be taken out of that that uh, give us our position because they're still relevant today on a cer certain matter. So I think uh, what Will is suggesting is something that we should continue to move forward on is getting our Inuit submission together uh, on where we see ourselves within this framework so that we're still uh, ready to submit and or uh, be prepared when the, the feds get their act together. For me, Duane? Are there any other comments in relation to the Arctic policy framework or any of the other action items? If there are none, thank you. Will. Next on our agenda are President's reports. We're a little bit ahead of our agenda, so we'll start with the President's reports before we take a break. In this section of the agenda, each of um, the Inuit leadership has, a, has an opportunity to talk about what uh, their particular organization is doing some of the key points, some of the highlights over the past year. Uh, ITK will start, so I'll, I'll go first. I want to direct anyone who is uh, listening and watching in on the live stream to also note that the 2017-2018 annual report is available on ITK's website as is the 2016 to 2019 ITK strategy and action plan. And both of those documents are key to the work that is being undertaken by ITK and the direction that is given by the ITK board of directors. In 27, 2018, we had a very busy year. Organizationally, ITK um, uh, grew quite a bit. We have been, um, taking on new staff and uh, as with the increased work with the federal government and with all of our Inuit regions, we now um, went from about 33 staff to about 38 staff within that particular year. We have grown since the end of the fiscal year uh, again, but uh, we are at a point of growth within ITK as an organization. We also have really focused on Inuit employment, 
our annual employment rates went from 35% to 55% from uh, 2016 until now. And we continue to prioritize the new hiring um, and, prior and prioritize uh, recruiting capable Inuit from all Inuit Nunangat regions. Uh, our, our, our budget went from approximately 6 million in 2016-2017 to approximately 9 million in 2017-2018. So that is a, a large jump in funding over one um, fiscal year. We will get into the, the finances later, but I also just wanted to flag that as something that of, of great significance to our organization and uh, it's allowed us to uh, support Inuit regional participation in national processes. It's allowed for us to be able to undertake our work and undertake our work and, and engage with partners and do the research, and the policy work, to be able to present to the board for um, the positions that then ITK is directed to take on any number of key issues. We uh, focus on the connection that we have to our Inuit regions and the processes that are undertaken through ITK are not just at the political level, but also are at the senior technical level. There are 17 board committees and working groups that function underneath the ITK um, board of directors. And each of them have very specific roles, whether it's in relation to public health or suicide prevention or unifying the um, Inuit writing system. Uh, we take experts and Inuit regional technical staff um, and, and their uh, expertise and knowledge and bring them in rooms where they can then advise to ITK in the national level. So the positions that are taken by ITK are an amalgamation of the advice and consideration of all Inuit uh, regions and then are also clarified through the direction and through resolution by our ITK board of directors. We continue to implement the 2016-2019 uh, ITK uh, strategy and action plan and in that action plan there are five key components to the, the work that ITK does. So I'll discuss uh, ITK's work in this particular fiscal year through the lens of those five um, key themes or key areas which ITK does work. First is in re relation to representation. So we um, are the national component of the Inuit democracy and we provide representation in specific areas for specific things. I, as the ITK president, attend first minister's meetings. There was one first minister's meeting in the reporting period where um, the ITK president sits alongside re, uh, pres um, premiers from territories and provinces and the prime minister. I am also invited to any number of federal, provincial, territorial, indigenous ministerial meetings. So uh, there are 30 some federal cabinet ministers and each one of those cabinet ministers has it's their own FPT as they're called. So we get invited to uh, approximately 20 or so FPT meetings every year that are, that are on specific subjects, whether they're health or housing or uh, defense or international trade, that we are asked to cover a wide area. Uh, and I have counterparts with each one of, of the federal departments. And then the work that we do uh, is linked with all the pro uh, provincial and territorial ministers who come to these meetings and, um, and listen to the indigenous peoples so First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. So for my part, I make sure that the presentations that ITK gives are in keeping with the direction that ITK has received from its board. And if there are gaps, then we have conversations with Inuit leadership about the strategy to take. 
And in, in some cases, we would love to go and present, but there either isn't time or we don't have positions on particular issues that the federal government wants to speak uh, with us about. So there are some instances where we do respectfully pass, uh, waiting for a time when we either have explicit mandate from our board or we have the capacity to actually get to all the meetings that we have to attend. So that's the outward facing part of representation with uh, the federal government in provinces and territories. With the inward facing, um, we have an Inuit Crown Partnership Committee. That committee met three times within the 27, uh, 2018 uh, reporting period. We had a meeting in Nain, Nunatsiavut, last September, which corresponded with our last AGM. We then had a meeting with the Prime Minister in Ottawa in the spring. And this summer we were here in Inuvik. The Inuit Crown Partnership Committee brings together approximately four or five federal cabinet ministers with the entirety of Inuit leadership on um, the things that we have jointly decided are priority areas. There will be a, a further um, update and briefing on this particular issue later in the day, so I won't get into the details, but just to say that this process has allowed for Inuit leaders to connect with federal cabinet ministers and the prime minister on a regular basis on a specific scope of work. And that work is decided by the entirety of the group. And that is a new way forward and it's, it's something that is still um, coming together. We as Inuit leadership um, still have uh, things that we wanna work on to improve the process as do the, our federal counterparts. The, um, the response to this or the, the purpose behind it is to figure out how to get to action. All of this representational work and going to meetings only matters if we actually can achieve uh, uh, um, either outcomes of support or fiscal investment or a change in policy or a change in the way in which the federal government imagines the um, indigenous space, the Inuit Nunangat space, or the Inuit space uh, across uh, Canada. And just looking at the 2018 budget, it was the first time ever that there was an Inuit section within the indigenous section of the budget. All previous budgets, if there was an indigenous section, it did not clarify between Inuit First Nations and Métis. And many of the investments in those budgets were specifically for First Nations on reserve. So we are making strides uh, and it's a bumpy road, but a lot of um, federal departments now understand that, that Inuit don't fall under the Indian Act, that uh, we have settled land claims, that there, there, are, there is an, a democracy, an Inuit democracy. And if you engage with a president of our land claim agreements on in bilateral processes and engage with ITK at the national process, that there is a synergy and a continuity there that allows for the federal government to know for, uh, in, in no certain terms that it is dealing with Inuit leadership. And that is a huge strength of our representational process and it's allowed us to access over a billion dollars in Inuit specific money over the past three federal budgets that flows into the control of Inuit representational organizations and then flows into our communities. And that is very significant. It, it's a principle. It, it, does, it may, even if that money ends up being uh, flowed to a province or territory for service delivery, the fact that Inuit organizations now can decide how those funds are spent, can create partnerships that Inuit regions want to create to put terms and conditions on those funds so that if um, there is a service partner that they are abiding by the terms that Inuit set for funds for suicide prevention or TB elimination or housing. Um, that is the new world and the, the way forward that we have charted in relation to representation. The second area that's highlighted about that what we do is in relation to research. Uh, ITK um, uh, released 
its national Inuit strategy on research this winter. And that was a culmination of about an 18 month to two year process through the Inuit Kavisarving National Committee that led the development of um, this particular research strategy. Just at the board, ITK board meeting yesterday, the implementation plan for the National Inuit Strategy on Research was approved. And that implementation plan is from 2018 to 2023. Uh, research and uh, the outcome of research, the data that, uh, that, that is so instrumental in creating policy change also needs to be done in a way that's respectful of Inuit so that we as Inuit can believe in the research findings and the outcomes of the research that is done about Inuit in Inuit Nunangat. So ITK depends upon research to tell the Inuit story, to give a, um, an evidence-based reality that then will allow for the federal government or provinces or territories to meet um, the positions that we have with an, with an understanding of exactly what those concerns are. If we know how um, the speci specifics of overcrowding or the specifics of food insecurity, then we can identify solutions and we can get funding for those solutions in a, in a much more concrete way than if uh, we came to the table just saying, we know there are people hungry and we need to help them. But if we can come to the table saying there are 70% of our populations who are food insecure and of those populations, we know that many of them need more country food. And this, these are the, this is the priority for Inuit and this should be the priority for government. That has been a more effective way for ITK to move these issues forward. Number three is in relation to policy guidance and uh, ITK does an in-kind service for um, all the Inuit regions in relation to interacting day-to-day -day with the 30 some odd federal departments on national Inuit priorities in relation to policy issues. Uh, uh, we are a staff now of about 45 uh, and we were a staff of in, uh, you know, 35 to 40 in this, in this reporting period and can you imagine how large the federal public service is and how many people are on the other side of this and how few of them actually know anything about Inuit. Uh, we know that each one of our regions has bilateral relationships with federal departments and you have priority areas that you push for and that you go to Ottawa too. And ITK in no way replaces any of that work. What we do is provide that in-kind support on the areas that we all agree are priorities, that we have worked through our subcommittees to create posi national positions on, that then we can go to uh, Indigenous services or Crown Indigenous Relations or Health Canada um, or uh, ESDC and provide that, whether it's the policy advice or the introduction to Inuit, um, the push for equity within the federal public service, the push between indigenous interests because First Nations and Métis interests always are competing with Inuit interests at the national level. And ITK is able to do um, uh, a lot of that work that's necessary to pave the way for better decisions. And again, referencing the 17 subcommittees uh, that we work with, it may seem like a lot but in relation to the work that we're able to then get out of those subcommittees, it, uh, it is a great investment of time because for the time spent from regions that come to the national level to provide advice to the national level, it allows then for every ITK staff who works on these files to then go into 15 or 20 or 30 offices in the federal system in any given month or, or um, or a small period of time and say, this is what Inuit want. And we are in Ottawa, we're able to have those uh, relationships and, and build the successes over time. We also in, do public outreach and uh, we, we talk about 
Inuit to Canadians and, and to the world. Just in 2018 alone, there have been over 700 media stories where ITK has been mentioned. Uh, I uh, give a lot of, of media interviews, as do many of my staff. In the reporting period, I, uh, I had approximately 50 speeches uh, that I gave to Canadians, to different places, whether it's in universities or whether it's um, in communities or other parts of, of uh, the country that ask to hear about Inuit in a more specific manner, uh, I'm able to provide a perspective that allows people to understand Inuit more. I've also in the past year done approximately 100 interviews on a wide variety of subjects. Uh, and everywhere from our regional and local radio stations to uh, the national level and, and CBC's Power and Politics or CTV's Power Play, uh, um, I've been able to, to tell our story and I hope I've done it in a respectful way and it, that is in keeping with the mandate that ITK has. And uh, that allows for Canadians to understand Inuit in a much better way. There are a couple of other key points within public outreach. Uh, there was an Indigenous atlas that was created by Canadian Geographical Society. In that atlas, there is an Indigenous uh, section and then there are First Nations, Inuit and Métis sections. And I'm very proud that ITK um, worked with the Canadian Geographical Society to create the content for the Inuit section within the Atlas. And that was released on Canada Day and I was hoping to have them here today, but unfortunately our cargo didn't make it, but we will be um, sending all the delegates uh, your own individual um, Indigenous Atlas. We we'll just need to know where we need to send them. <clears throat> also in relation to social media, uh, we have approximately 8,000 followers on Facebook, and that's a 200% increase since 2016. We have 9,600 followers on Twitter, and that's a 300% increase since 2016. So we are uh, constantly engaged with social media and with Canadians in person about Inuit and about Inuit issues. The last point um, and the last thing that ITK does is it unifies Inuit. And these board meetings, these AGMs, the work that we do here is first and foremost an exercise in unifying Inuit, bringing Inuit together over common issues, uh, getting over the, our colonial uh, past that have separated us and also charting a shared course together at the national level. We recognize that in each region, there are very distinct and separate activities and specific histories and priorities. But that doesn't mean that we don't have a lot in common at the national level and a lot of work that we can do together that in, in the end benefits all of us. A key, um, project that we've been working on for the last year is the Inuit Nunangat Pemanangit project, where we try every two weeks to produce a new four minute video that highlights an individual in Inuit Nunangat and their connection to the land, their connection to uh, their place within Inuit Nunangat. That was a response to Canada 150, Canada 150 projects didn't necessarily get to the heart of um, um, the indigenous reality or the Inuit reality. So we then proposed to Heritage Canada this project, which was 200 stories of uh, Inuit. And uh, it's basically a living land use and occupancy project where uh, our land use and occupancy um, uh, um, work set the stage for our land claim agreements. And now these stories give life in the 21st century to what that land use and occupancy looks like and the deep connections that our individual Inuit have with their communities and with the land. So we've uh, produced, uh, I believe around 20 or 25 of these and we have uh, partnerships with each one of the four communication societies in our Inuit Nunangat regions 
So we're doing this in partnership with um, regional Inuit broadcasting and um, communication societies. So we're very proud of it and we expect that this project will continue uh, for the next three years at least. There's a whole host of things that, that we'll be talking about that we have done uh, over the course of, of the AGM here today. And I will refer you to the 2017-18 uh, annual report, which itemizes the work we have done in response to the, um, um, the 2016 to 2019 ITK action plan and strategy to give you a sense of how we are fulfilling the mandate that has been given to us by the ITK Board of Directors. Nakomik, are there any questions in relation to my report? Great, if there are no questions, I'd um, propose that we take a 15 minute break and come back the next uh, report will be from the Inuviala Regional Corporation.
Check one, two. Thank you. 
All right. <clears throat> okay, everyone. We will reconvene. I could get so everyone settled. Nakomik, thank you to the IRC staff and all others who help prepare our, our snacks and our, our lunches. Just for an FYI for everyone, at noon, we will have food delivered here. So if you're thinking about lunch, um, lunch will be provided. I'd like to now call on Dwayne Smith for the New Gallery Regional Corporation report. Thank you. Uh, I say, say, Koyanak. But uh, I, we've handed out our newsletter to you. Uh, I'm just going to point out some highlights from that. But our newsletter gives you all the information or most of the information on our activities from each of our departments. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into each of the details in here, but the uh, newsletter comes out every quarter. We also put out uh, our Tosiax at uh, magazine. Uh, every quarter as well, and uh, occasionally some of our departments will put out flyers, I guess, uh, when there's something specific that they're wanting to report on a project or a program. But uh, this is how we uh, 
are expected to report to our beneficiaries and the region on our on our activities. Uh, when I came in, we uh, created and implemented uh, our strategic plan for 2016 to 2019. Um, if you want copies of that, uh, we can try to provide you with it. It's a very large document, uh, very ambitious, but the staff have been uh, implementing and uh, completing a lot of those objectives as we speak. Uh, under that uh, plan, some of the key issues are to revitalize and celebrate the Inavawa cultural identity and values. Uh, exercise stewardship over our lands, of course. Just like any of the other regions, uh, our lands are probably the most valued and respected of uh, our land claims and uh, because they look after us. Uh, the third one is the to improve the capacity and well-being of individuals, families, and communities, promoting uh, healthier lifestyles, supporting uh, educational development. And as you go through the uh, newsletter, you'll see a lot of the program delivery and activities that we have within each of the communities. The uh, fourth uh, pillar is to continue to assert innovative rights and benefits through implementation of the IFA. It's going on uh, 35 years uh, next year, so uh, under that as well as uh, pushing the economy as well as governance issues. And that's where the uh, IFA 101 that I keep stressing comes into play. Uh, the fifth is uh, take an evidence-based decision-making approach to policy development and advocacy. As well, number six is to manage optimally the human, physical, and financial resources of the Innovawit corporate group. Uh, during the last year, we've had our 42 directors uh, where we bring them all in from the communities, the elected representatives uh, to have uh, uh, 42 directors uh, meeting to discuss our vision, uh, where we're going as an organization, et cetera, as well as to review the strategic plan to make sure that it's reflective of the goals uh, of the organization itself and to seek direction from the directors. We also brought in our youth uh, within that. Uh, we had our youth component. We revitalized our uh, youth council. Uh, it's as usual, it's a difficult issue because uh, our president is part of the uh, Nunavut Sivinuxivut. Uh, uh, program. So she's distance uh, communicating and she does make it back to the region uh, when she can. She's actually here in Inuvik uh, on summer work for Parks Canada. And uh, maybe I'll contact them to see if uh, she has time to sit in, but they're very busy out in the field right now. Uh, some of the other things that we have in regards to the first objective that I mentioned is uh, our language nest uh, also receives support. We have, uh, we create material for our Innovawit uh, early childhood development centers that we have in most of our communities. Uh, something that may be of interest to you uh, is what we're creating is an Innovawit digital library north which will be uh, accessible on our website at some point. In regards to the stewardship of our lands, we, uh, some of you I've mentioned, we have created our Innovawood Harvesters Assistance Trust, which has been going for over 20 years now. Uh, we we invested uh, some funds into a trust. Uh, we got the government to match those funds. Uh, 
we, with that trust, we provide assistance to members in the communities as well as outside the region uh, to offset the cost to purchase snowmobiles, boats, outboard motors. Those are major items. So uh, at the discretion of the local committee that decides who is a priority, the funding for that can provide up to 75% of the equipment uh, to the persons that are approved. And then we have uh, minor items that people can apply for under that, uh, such as sewing machines, ice augers, bargains, uh, fishnets, etc. But we try to live off the interest of that. And each year, uh, the board has been putting more funds into that to make it grow based on the demand because it never has enough funds. Uh, in regards to the other parts of our land administration, we have a draft mineral strategy that we're uh, almost ready to show to our board as well. We have 26% of the land mass of this territory uh, within our region. And with the ocean opening up, we know that uh, there's gonna be more and more exploration in our offshore islands. So we're trying to be strategically prepared uh, for that process. We know we have a lot of uh, diamond potential as well as uh, rare metals uh, on our islands. Uh, with the completion of the highway, which some of you uh, traveled on, we're working with our uh, the game council as well as our co-management uh, bodies in regards to trying to develop uh, management approaches to ensure that uh, pressures on the water bodies are alleviated to the extent that they can be. Under our final agreement, we are able to put uh, restrictions and or close water bodies to outside uh, uh, individuals from harvesting if it's required. Uh, we've been working with the uh, federal government in regards to the regional strategic environment assessment on the offshore uh, as a part of uh, trying to gather more information and understanding of the ecosystem there. The funding is uh, way too low for that in reality. Uh, under the third uh, pillar in regards to capacity and well-being of individuals, families and communities, uh, similar to ITK, uh, we've been working with the federal government. Uh, when I came in, we had a $9 million contribution agreement. Uh, since then, it's grown to $32 million. Uh, we have about 60 or 70 contribution agreements with different departments, uh, mostly with the federal government. Some are through the territorial government, but we continue to stress that... Uh, more of those funds should be directly government to government or nation to nation with us, with uh, Ottawa and ourselves. Uh, one of the examples is uh, Project Jewel, as it's referred to. It's on the land wellness program. It's gotten a lot of recognition nationally and recently internationally on the successes of that program. Uh, we've also got our non-insured uh, health navigator, similar to Nanatsiawut. Um, we stole her away basically from uh, the Department of Health and Social Services. She's got around 17 years experience as a beneficiary uh, with health. So we're lucky to have her within our organization now. We run uh, early childhood programs within each of our communities as well, either Aboriginal Head Start or uh, like I said earlier, the other programs. And of course the uh, housing issue that everyone else is also aware of. We've uh, enhanced, as I pointed out in my past reports, and you can see in our newsletter, the emphasis that our organization puts on uh, supporting uh, education development. 
Uh, we've got a large focus on our youth as well. Um, we've uh, reorganized our youth council. We've got a representation from each of the communities. Uh, we sent a large delegation to the National Inuit Youth Summit in Maine, and uh, they came back with excellent reports in regards to the hospitality there and uh, the good discussions and deliberations that took place at that. As well, uh, we support them at different national and international forums. Uh, the National Science Camp, Students on Ice, C3 Expedition, uh, Athletes and Cultural Performance, uh, the North American Indigenous Games as some examples. And some of you might not be aware of this, but uh, in Fairbanks every year for over 40, getting close to 50 years now, they have what they call the uh, World Eskimo Indian Olympics, and it's basically our Inuit games for the most part. And it's going getting close to 50 years, and we periodically sent our cultural performers and or athletes to that. Uh, under the fourth pillar in regards to economics, uh, our CEDO has, uh, I've shown some of you the outside at the very least, our country food processing uh, facility uh, where we're trying to provide opportunity for beneficiaries and others in the region to learn how to be connoisseurs and enhance the products of the country foods in the area. We produced a different variety of animals within that. Uh, under other initiatives, we're also creating, like I mentioned, the cruise ship strategy. Uh, we've gotten a couple of contracts uh, with the federal government as well to look at the drones and the training of those. We've got uh, six drones, I think. Two of them are the larger type uh, and four of the smaller. Uh, the, the two of them... Uh, you can go out of distance or out of sight as it's referred to and we're looking at that as a tool for our land management as well as other uh, initiatives such as uh, vegetation management uh, for grazing etc of the reindeer herd amongst other things shoreline erosion so it has a lot of uh, value and benefit to that uh, as well under our final agreement we have section 16 which um, requires the government to work with us to do an evaluation to see if they've met their obligations uh, of implementing the final agreement adequately or not and basically it's have they uh, given us enough contract opportunities or procurement issues amongst other things education training uh, those types of opportunities so we're pushing the federal government to work with us on that Uh, in regards to governance, uh, we've been bombarded uh, at the very least with uh, the federal legislation. I'm not sure how much time or capacity of the other regions put into it, but uh, we've been dealing with at least 14 pieces of federal legislation, both onshore and offshore, that are, are being reviewed and restructured, and we have to make sure uh, these revisions are reflective of our final agreement and our rights that we have as Indigenous peoples. And then uh, we also have our territorial government, which is, uh, since we've got devolution, they've taken over responsibility of the vast majority of the land management, and now they're creating legislation. And so we're trying to make sure that it's reflective and consistent with our final agreement as well as our land management processes within the region also. And uh, just to make reference again to the IFA 101 e-learning platform, uh, that's being loaded up onto our website and you can learn the basics of the IFA, but if you have questions about our final agreement as well, you can send those in and we'll respond to it. It's a, we're trying to develop that so 
beneficiaries and others that are interested in learning more about it. Uh, it's a tool that can be accessed and used for that purpose. Uh, as well as the last one is the evidence-based decision-making approach uh, to policy development. Um, we've adopted processes for the measurement of social, cultural, economic conditions for each of our communities. Uh, and that uh, can be accessed on our website as well, innovalindicators.com, I believe, Bob, all one word. And it tells you uh, the reliance and the relationship uh, each of our communities has on country food, as an example. Uh, one of our communities, almost 70% of their food comes from the land. And it, it's those types of indicators that give you the evidence base that you need to lobby and support uh, for Nutrition North, as an example, to amend its policies and processes to reflect reality that it should support country foods and uh, community exchange programs so that others can have access to those foods where others have uh, more of that. Uh, really quickly in here as well, you'll see our finances and accounting are uh, within our newsletter. It's very transparent. Uh, we're obligated to pay out a dividend. We have a policy in place, uh, a formula that addresses that issue. Uh, on how we uh, do that. Um, you'll see some of the other events that we sponsor within each of our communities for cultural or recreational activities. And of course, this past uh, spring, just like all your communities, you have jamborees, festivities, uh, whatever you call them. Uh, and that's what we also support. Uh, we hosted the ITK Arctic tour. Uh, it was this region's turn for the federal government to visit us as well. Uh, that went uh, very well in regards to them uh, meeting uh, different uh, communities. They went to Tikkiyatuk and met with the representatives there. Uh, they had a uh, good discussion and dialogue uh, with uh, Eddie and others while they visited. And uh, if there's, uh, I'll leave it at that, but if you can see in our newsletter the details and if there's any questions you might have, just ask one of, uh, one of us as the delegation here for more information if you want it. And if I may, I'll just uh, ask uh, Eddie or Jerry if they have anything they wanna add uh, because they do a lot of their own activities that in the communities uh, as well. Can you name me? Thanks, Dwayne. I'd just like to highlight, highlight one issue that we've been working on in Tuck is the uh, climate change. We've had funding from the government committed for the next three years, and we're going to have people starting to understand and be involved in watching the climate change adaptation and be taking part in it so that we include the uh, the staff at the school the school students and elders that'll be showing them how to judge and monitor uh, the changing condition. But having the youth learn at the uh, technical level too with staff from University of Victoria, uh, just to ad adapt to the uh, understanding of climate change and its uh, effects in our region now. So that's a, a real project that it's ongoing and I think that once we we implement it in, in this fall with the students we're going to see some more interest from the students at their school level to take part we're trying to include them because they're in the next generation that's going to be affected and we'd like to know the effects of it and uh, what we've gone through and understanding from our part about it so in, uh, I have nothing more to add in the region. Uh, Duane covered it quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to highlight the, the climate change that we've got going in Tuck. Um, uh, 
I think is one of the highlights from our community right now. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Um, we, our community, we have issues, really lots of issues on climate change. Our, uh, our, we have a station out, out Ranger Station about 20 miles from here and we use it for programs on the land programs and that. And that is getting pretty delicate because there's really lots of mudslides. There's like, I took some pictures this, this summer and really lots of mudslides and that uh, to me, I'm gonna, I think it's time we had a good look at our ranger station because there's two of them on each side of it. And also the new Tuck Highway, the guardianship program didn't work for us. We had to find our own funding. And I think that's a must because to monitor that highway because we went from hardly any tourists to 30 to 40 a day. And we have no infrastructure on, on tourists too. Shipping is another issue. We're working on that. But like Eddie says, we we deal a lot with like ranger stations. We use our elders and elders and use it for our elders and youth to under you know pick berries, storytelling, and that's getting affected by the climate change. Thank you. Nakumi, Duane, Eddie, and Jerry for your um, updates and reports. Aluki, got a question? Uh, thank you for that report, uh, Duane. Um, I, was, I was wanting more information. Um, I was curious about um, the program you talked about in terms of equipment. Uh, provided for ski, uh, snowmobiles and sewing machines. And you made a comment that the funds that um, I guess IRC put forward was matched by government. I know in Nunavut, we um, restarted the Nunavut Harvester Support Program, which I think sounds like a similar program uh, last year. And we put $15 million from NTI into that fund. And we were requesting that the federal government and the territorial government match what we put in um, and they haven't to date. So I was wanted more information about which government you refer to and how you did that. Well, under that, uh, um, I'm dating myself, I guess, Aluki, because uh, it was actually none of it that uh, put 15 million in and it was matched by your land claim back then. And uh, under our land claim, we said what another region is entitled to, we should be entitled to the same. So we exercise that part of the IFA. And uh, so the territorial government uh, matched what Nunavut was doing, and then they based it on population. So we got around 2.2 million, and we matched that, and we put it into a trust. But what Nunavut did was you... Uh, you didn't do the same approach we did, you ended up uh, letting it expire. All the funds were eventually allocated, but for us, the reason it's still going is because we put it into a trust and we tried to live off the interest. So not everybody gets what they want, but uh, we try to, we help about 70% of the applicants, I guess, every year. And uh, we know we have a growing population, so we're putting more of our own funds into it, but at the same time, we're uh, trying to lobby uh, both territorial and federal governments to put uh, more funds into it as well, because of the importance and the value of it, uh, maintaining a relationship to your land, your culture, but the nutrition value of it rather than switching to a Western-based diet all the time. Uh, it, I was mentioning it to some of your colleagues the other day when I was showing them our building, but uh, it seems like there's a lot of interest and in, uh, I will get our manager, Shelley, to uh, provide our policy uh, so that uh, people have a better understanding of that program. Nakumik, are there any other questions or comments in relation to the IRC report?
Nakumi Duane. Now I'll turn to McAvey Corporation, Andy Pirti. Nakumi Gnadan. I know that uh, already, I think uh, our time that we had uh, saved uh, is not as uh, much there anymore. So I'll try to make some time for everyone else, maybe. Or every time I talk in uh, my presentations uh, at home in my region, uh, uh, people uh, tend to doze off because uh, I usually talk about uh, numbers and money. So I'll try, to, I'll try not to be on that uh, area as much. <clears throat> so, um, first of all, uh, Andy Beauty, uh, Makivik uh, Treasurer. I'm here to uh, represent uh, my region. Um, there's, uh, just, there's been a lot of developments in our region lately, and uh, uh, unfortunately, Charlie is uh, caught up with something, uh, um, something else in back home. Uh, uh, he had to work on something that is. Uh, Definitely, definitely, definitely need it uh, at the moment, and he couldn't be here. So, I, I have been uh, uh, covering him. Uh, and fortunate to have uh, my two delegates uh, here with me. <clears throat> um, so, I'll start off by uh, by mentioning that uh, uh, Makivik uh, um, has uh, has uh, different mandates. And a lot of times uh, we got a balance um, because we are expected um, to contribute to the region. And at the same time, we have an operation and we have uh, some mandates to cover. And at the same time, also uh, what I noticed, and it has become a big part of my um, uh, mandate also uh, in the corporation is to, to grow. Because uh, my um, my approach is the day that uh, Makivik was created and the day that we signed the agreement uh, is when also we got a um, from uh, we got a, a compensation from the federal um, that in my opinion should never lose its value the day after so which means every time and every year we have to meet the inflation. That has been my approach. Um, and at the same time, since I got, um, I got in war for the years, couple of years, uh, governance, we started working on governance uh, very much in which um, um, the, the executives uh, uh, compensation has now been down to um, Makivik only. Um, and it was not the case uh, in the past because <clears throat> Let's not forget, Makivik was the first uh, organization created under the land claims agreement within Inuit, and it was the first model, in my in my understanding, for the rest of the Inuit uh, Nunagat. And it has been uh, working well, but uh, that doesn't mean we can't go towards improving uh, the functions of uh, the corporation. So that being said, uh, last year we have decided to create a uh, development corporation, which was not the case in the past. Uh, it was just a, a result of uh, the governance changes that we were, we were working on. And <clears throat> although this year we had to do few changes because the structure was not uh, um, deemed uh, effective, but yet we kept that uh, development corporation um, entity and we have now um, appointed by the board of Makivik, uh, the board sitting in the subsidiaries. And that has been a big uh, change uh, in our region. And um, I believe so far it's working well. We have good board that was appointed and they are constantly working um, um, and going forward, hopefully, we will look into the possible investments and other uh, business opportunities. <clears throat> um, and also, I would like to mention that we had a change of leadership. It was a big, uh, quite a big change. Um, and I will tell you, as a, as a 
an executive who's been there a couple of years uh, to get someone who's been there before, who has the knowledge right from the beginning of the agreement in the Makavik, um, as a new guy, uh, and also um, with the uh, aspiration of doing well for the to, for the region going forward, and uh, with the new new blood, uh, like they say, but at the same time getting an, a guy who's been there right from the beginning, who has the knowledge of uh, uh, politics and at the federal level. Um, it has been quite uh, an experience for me and uh, I feel fortunate to be part of the two people who are there at the moment. And <clears throat> this new uh, direction also um, put a new vision to Makivik um, because now we have uh, shifted our focus towards working with the federal and at the same time going towards uh, self um, determination is a big word uh, that we have been uh, talking about. And <clears throat> speaking of that, uh, a couple of months ago in the spring, we had an all organization meeting in Kudruk where all the organizations were invited, the people, key people who are involved in these organizations took part in the meeting and uh, it, it was well received. We haven't had this type of meeting for quite some time and the discussions were uh, very productive and it, uh, the issues that we have or the challenges were discussed during these meetings and at the end of those uh, uh, three day meetings, the declarations were uh, approved and one of them was Arctic sovereignty and also um, um, self government governance for Nunavik region. <clears throat> um, Going back to business, um, as a treasurer, I can tell you that I'm always looking at the Makivik portfolio and our investments. As you guys know, we ha we are a bit different to, to compare to Nunavut and NTI, where they have a trust of uh, their compensation is invest invested in a trust. Makivik has its own investors and they have their investments in-house and we have a portfolio to manage. And we also have uh, subsidiaries um, to watch over. <clears throat> um, it was quite some time now we've been uh, discussing that uh, we have to watch our investments. And uh, we all know those who are involved in investments, it is not a good idea to be heavily invested in one thing. And that's why we have started to talk about um, our airlines, because we have two airlines and the, their market value and their our investment amount is quite a big a chunk. And that's why we started talking about that maybe it's a good thing to get away from that more. Um, that's why the discussion has started about the first air. But when we got a new leadership, he has he had his own vision and he wanted to, rather than uh, getting rid of first air with a, of course, with a return, um, go towards other Inuit Nunavut uh, and see if they would be willing to be part of this investment. And that's why um, you guys are aware that uh, um, a newsletter was uh, written and uh, we have been in talks with, um, with Innovaluit. And it's a good, in business perspective, it's going to be a good result if it, if it falls through for both uh, territories. <clears throat> um, that, uh, that was the business part of it. Um, for my, my perspective, for my department, uh, we have been in a, quite of a challenging uh, lately, challenging part, we have a good problem, as they would share, if they would say, because uh, since the uh, financial crisis, um, as you guys know, the market uh, market crashed, and since then, um, interest rates has been low, which means everybody goes to stocks because that nobody, all the the bonds and uh, long term investments in the and market, marketable securities 
are not generating any money. So that being said, uh, the, every investor has been going towards stocks. And when that happens, it keeps on growing, growing every year. And even, in, even till the day, it's been growing. When that happens, you are quick. You're getting cash in your portfolio because you keep you sell. And sometimes you don't buy because they keep on growing. And we have this uh, little problem we have at the moment. And that's, we keep saying that it's a good problem. Uh, it's starting to be maybe not so good problem anymore. And we need to find somewhere to invest. And that is the, the situation we are at uh, Makivik at today. Um, <clears throat> and hopefully an opportunity will come uh, with the new development corp that we have today. And they are planning on uh, working with the economic development uh, arm that we have in Makivik. And going forward, uh, hopefully that will uh, generate some uh, opportunity um, with our money. Uh, to conclude, I will talk about also from my department, uh, we have an education department. I mean, uh, we, we take uh, an effort to um, uh, invest in our employees and uh, we make sure that we take care of our um, employees and we have some aspirations. Uh, if you look out, you look back in 20 years, we didn't have as much beneficiaries working in Makivik due to only because of uh, uh, they call qualifications. Um, now we have a new, new approach and we invest in our employees. Um, we have a, on my side here, Darlene Parges, who works in my department, and she takes courses. Because um, um, either um, we allow our employees to uh, take courses outside the corporation, we also bring in uh, a professor um, giving courses in our department, in in-house. In, in um, and also, if we combine the experience of that the, the employees have in, the, in their uh, respective positions and also the courses that they take, we can, uh, with the help of uh, Lester B. Pearson um, School, uh, we can have them uh, get, a, get a permit, uh, which is called the competency acquired um, um, uh, let me let me get that the proper name. I just want to make sure that I have a it's a recognition of acquired competency. You it's a re, uh, recognized by the Minister of Education. You get actual get a degree just with your experience in the, your workplace and also the education that they that you have taken. So <clears throat> this is to conclude uh, my presentation. Um, and thank you very much again for um, Dwayne and uh, your your uh, your people. It's, um, it's the first. It's my first time uh, being in Inuvik. It's uh, beautiful here, um, and I always wanted to be here. And thanks for thank you very much for having me. I can make. <clears throat> I can make Andy. Any questions or comments in relation to McAvee Corporation's report? Thanks, Dwayne. No, thanks. Thanks for your report, Andy uh, and Makovic. But uh, at some point, um, like to know more on your um, your mining activities, how you're structured in a relationship with that, as well as uh, your offshore. Uh, like you guys, our land claims fairly old, and we weren't allowed to negotiate the offshore, but now. Uh, we're entertaining that with the federal government and you guys recently negotiated that and we're trying to learn the best practices and not only that, but the other thing is your uh, commercial ventures offshore, how, how that's uh, structured as well as how it's operating, but we can do that on the side as well. Just the uh, other activities that would, we would benefit from learning from you guys from. For sure, if um, um, if the opportunity arises, arises uh, we can keep that in mind uh, very much, and uh, we can discuss further. Um, I know that uh, uh, 
we as you're talking about the Nilka agreement that we have in the offshore, the islands that we own, um, and also uh, there's a story behind that uh, the quotas that we get uh, for shrimp fishing. Um, those are the ones that uh, we we have. It it derived from uh, the business ventures we had in the past and. Uh, the losses that we incurred uh, that ended up with the quotas. Uh, for sure, uh, uh, there's there's some uh, discussions that we can have uh, to faci fa facilitate or uh, perhaps um, help you guys and uh, find ways to try and uh, uh, get some uh, opportuni opportunities. And uh, for the mining, um, I guess uh, you're talking about the Raglan agreement. Um, and then uh, we also have uh, uh, Canadian royalties, um, uh, Nunavik Nickel Agreement. Um, uh, they, are, they, are, they are two different uh, agreements um, in which uh, the, the first agreement, the Raglan Agreement, we right away, as soon as the operations and the process profit started to, to be generated, we benefited 4.5. Um, uh, percent of the uh, net profit after smelting. Um, for the second, for the second agreement, um, five hundred million was invested in the project by the company. Um, so when the operation starts, we are uh, there's a, there's a formula that we can uh, incur not by the percentage of the profit, but from um, the price of the nickel is dictates what the, uh, the amount of uh, uh, money we will get, but only after that 500 million is paid off through uh, revenues that they are generating, our portion will increase. By, of course, that percentage of uh, the nickel price is still. So th those are the things that we can uh, discuss further. If you, if you happen to be in a neighborhood, um, we would uh, for sure welcome you in, uh, in my corporation, uh, Duane. Thank you, Mick. If there are no further comments or questions, I'll now ask Minutes of the government, Johannes Lamp, to make his presentation. Uh, the Minister of Government's update on um, some of the key files and issues uh, that we have been dealing with over the past year. And I also want to. Uh, First of all, thank uh, President Nathan Obed for the uh, tremendous work that he has done over the past three years. You have certainly shown strong leadership on both the national and international stages on matters of importance to our Inuit within Inuit Nunavut. The Nunatiawut government held, held its fourth general election for ordinary members this past May. We have three new executive council members, joining three others who were uh, re-elected. Only four out of 10 ordinary members are back for another term. So we have six new faces one of whom served as an ordinary member in Ayukak in the past. And he jokingly says that uh, other members of the Executive Council called him a recycled minister. Elections for Ayukak in the communities of Maine, Hopedale, McGovic, and Regulet, and for chairpersons of the Sibonibut Inuit Community Corporation in North East River, and the Nunahatigit Inuit Community Corporation 
in Happy Valley Goose Bay, Mud Lake, will take place on Tuesday, September 11. And elections for councillors in each of the five Inuit communities will take place on October 16. One of the key issues I want to update you on is the state of the George River caribou herd. As you are well aware, this herd has been in steady decline for a number of years, caused by deteriorating habitat, poor food resources, predation, and so on. The government of Newfoundland Labrador placed a ban on harvesting in 2013 when it became clear that the herd was in trouble. Realizing the importance of caribou, not only as a source of food, but also as a part of our culture, the indigenous peoples of Ungava self-organized into the Ungava Peninsula Peninsula Caribou Aboriginal Round Table. Not long after the ban was put in place. Last fall, all members of UPCART signed the Ungaba Peninsula Caribou Aboriginal Round Table Management Strategy entitled A Long Time Ago in the Future Caribou and the People of Ungaba. It was heralded as an historic moment as we now had the capacity to coordinate decision making on a scale that can affect the distribution and abundance of caribou. Although a living document, the strategy reflected a true and meaningful collaboration forged by the current crises but grounded in the past. And it represented a shared vision for caribou and the people of Ungawa. Earlier this year, we were informed that the Inuit nation of Labrador was pulling out of UPCART and would unilaterally implement its own management strategy. This was very concerning and disappointing for the Nunziat government. Not only did it raise questions about the future of UPCART, we feel it also places the George River Caribou in further jeopardy. The UPCART Technical Committee met in May and agreed to initiate talks with the Indonesian of Labrador up about the possibility of rejoining UPCART. The Inno of Quebec took the lead on the conversation, but despite their best efforts, the Inno of Labrador politely declined rejoining UPCART. With respect to the current state of George River Herd, a census was completed last month, and we are still waiting for the results to be released. However, the results from the 2017 Dungai Caribou Survey are publicly available. The population estimate increased from the last census from 930 animals in 2014 to 1,326 animals in 2017. Calf recruitment and average group size were also up from the 2014 survey. As you may know, on March 18 of, of this year, a young man from Nain passed away from what has now been confirmed 
as Mycobacterium tuberculosis. At that time, there were a number of other suspected cases and contact tracing had started. Four days later on March 22, the Nunziel government initiated a conference call with Minister Felpa to outline the situation and make several requests to support a re response to TB. Minister Felpott was very accommodating and director, directed her officials to follow up directly with the Nunziel government to help us address the situation. Subsequent to this, a second call was held with Minister Felpott Provincial Health Minister John Hagee and their senior officers to discuss a coordinated response. Officials were directed to take all the serious steps to deal with the TB cluster. A tri tripartite steering committee was formed to coordinate the short and medium term responses to TB in Maine and is comprised of a single representative from each of the federal, provincial, and municipal governments. A lot of work has been done to deal with this issue on the ground and behind the scenes. We have made tremendous progress, but there's still much that needs to be done if we are to eliminate TB in our communities. Right now, there are 14 confirmed cases of TB in Maine, two probable case, cases and 10 cases under investigation. Seven or 44% of the cases to date are 10 to 19 years of age. This is not surprising Given that index case, the 14-year-old young man was sputum positive and very infectious based on the number of cases among his contacts. About 600 people have been screened and some 250 chest x-rays have been completed in Nain. The x-ray equipment arrived in Nain on April 9, thanks to the direction given by Minister Felpa. There is proof that there are at least two separate clusters of cases at present. We also requested access to a gene expert from the federal government. The National Microbiology Laboratory sent a team to Nain to do a site visit in early April. And the equipment is on standby to loan for use in Nain. Based on the National Mi Mi Microbiology Laboratory report, subsequent provincial government review, it has been determined that a laboratory technologist registered in the province is required to use gene expert. The province is prepared to send someone from the Eastern Health Authority as necessary. In any event, as I noted, a lot of work has been done and continues to be done on this file. While we are making progress on numerous other issues that I have not mentioned, I think it is important to know that we still have many challenges, particularly with respect to housing, transportation, economic development, suicide, addictions, and language. However, I do feel 
we are on the right track. And I look forward to meeting those challenges that await. Are there any comments or questions in relation to minutes of the government's report? Uh, thanks, Johannes, for your report. Uh, aware of that caribou issue, it's uh, disturbing to see that uh, it's not improving uh, from 1 million down to just over 1,000. Uh, we have similar issues. Uh, we have uh, four populations here, including reindeer. Uh, one of them are doing very well. The other ones on the islands are coming back. But um, uh, again, I, I don't want to um, take up the time, but I'd like to talk to you more on the side in regards to how well the implementation of your governance is going, you know, where you're seeing the uh, areas that you're having difficulty as well as where you're uh, improving upon because we're in the process uh, still of negotiating our own self-governance and what we can learn from you uh, would help us in uh, how to alleviate those issues that you've learned already. Are there any other comments or questions? There are none. Uh, I'd like to now uh, give the floor to Nunavut Tungavik and Corporate President Eliki Kutra. Um, Ullakun, the Woodlak Pame Kuya Yuma Yuma, the Mami Inuvin Mikatimagata, Unnugluni Revik Jokta Taurokita, Momak Tunildo, um, Ilakatao Yunarota, Kuyana Roman, Kuyana Mitia Kasi, Ilakimi Inuvari, Kuyana Mitia Kaka. Amaru Pier Larilong in Narina Sima Lungan of Minga Catigisi Mayara, um, Catit Downing, Nadjun Nadjun Nakzelman, seven Catit Taus Marakina, Arenegus Catigitia Pagipija, Nurek Vilitaman in Sarasi Lugo. Um, Unica view Cataximagat Avicto Tosima Yunin, um, Pilarex say Unoctu Nadunanishin. A Jamie Ming Manunabum, Pilarab, Unoctum Mararu, a rot to the nine afternoon, Unicam Yakina, um, Ukaus Karumadungaru, Aran in any Mikatil of Simarata taste to money, a Pangat Padleri Law at the Nunabum Minero with Jot of Hanak to the Nunabu Gavamangano, Jamie Man Utuperu Nungan in Neroar of Simarata, Nunabu Gavamangano Tamit, Sibur of the Karakstone. Minister, Minister Nidlo, Asid Jaksimarashuti. Jame Man, um, Katimakatang Ming Mata, Tora Renatang in the Arctic Sweet Bitty, Sakatisil of Simang Mata, Tora Tabung Matiling Min, Arago to Samani Atom Nertang in me. Over good Lenon of Tunga becoming Asimal Chakovia Gitia of Tabun, Tena, 
um, <laughs> They may man pillow up to me, no one would turn a bit good, but I am never so married to go in a canaya to Karakata Maku to no pillar to me, a rag to Nitan as a Kesaro to Takwa, Okaus, Kawaki, and Rotu, Iloni to Atujo to Tosimatia or Mangata. How you may you know you go Atujo to Tosima, you know me Ningino, Tatakata me you in Uluta. Gava Matokat Kuno sang and Nasukluta, Atujok to Terea Kang Nini, Nazanaks Kanerasuk Pakluta. Agla Inu Lutaruni, Ekilini Pilir Katakatia Katami Yugun, um, Sanga began a sukutigo, Gava Matokat Kun, Ekaitina Sukuta, on the Angerotigi Loktabun, Tama in no Anger Toroto, Hano Tung on the Angerotu Varua, um, Makitongila. May 2015, Utilugo, Ekaktui, Vikusilatago, Angerotakarot, Simagatagava, Matokako, Angerati Vilutigo, Akaksu Magata, um, Hancha Katanga Mixano, uh, Tibuyo Katanga to Inungno, um, Atuavak Sony Yatuva or Sakato Yare River or Gavamatokakuno Sakato in Masuri Akunilo Utakika Taxima Lota, Tame Mantena, um, Isumagildugo Pildugo, um, Sanirago Pilare in a Sujatabo Amaru Okaus Karora Marani, Article twenty three, Lakuma U twenty three. In Unir Kanayak to Katana accounting in the government of Iluani Tanato Sanarago Pilaria and Asulutigo Isumagi Yabu Takikate and Simara at the Pang Nautin in Saka Yaria Kamata Kano Darikurum Unika Simazuni Kano Ekanayak to Takatana Mangata Kano the Illuminar to Takatana Mangata in Un Isiani Ila Nirum Nakak to Garoa is Magildo Nerium Nakan in the Okaromaga Rashunga to Ekam Katashunga join Okama Nerium Nakan now tuning him. They may man Nerio Karashut up, um, is to Magiara, um, Suri Yumakai Pilarina sing Nap Tugara, our rejected no Nap Tugara Kai, Gavamatokatko. They man is to Magatara Pilo Artumin, July nine or two to go Sakit Tilorata. I had learned no Mariga around the Pillar Kangana Rasta government to Katko Pillar Katigilotigo. Tana Ragosa Rekamagiana Suximasu Yashuti, no caro to train now Yashuti, Mana Pillar Dariglu to Sang and Dariglu to Pinaco Yirata, Nerio Giarasuji, Tame Katanganitino. Okaus of Katana Simakatama Arani, the Kama Yipso Luti, Inu Okausing and Sanga Katarama. Is the Magidugo in a canayati unum of Sauri Pata Gavama Iloani? Pete son of Sauri Pata, Inukti to Pete the town of Sauri Rayamata Inui. Takwa at Tuanga at Tuanga Larin at Tuanga Larigasu will do be a canayak to crown of Sauri Lutin, and my Inui or housing in the Atom of Sauri Lutin. How you might know, Nunabutarang in nineteen ninety, um, is nineteen ninety eight more courted the go. Tito Kata Karao Simangman, Government of Katko Minister Nga Kinao Yadere Nangmo, Taste Mane Tito Karao Simangman, Nona Vuta Mere Siluta. Inui Ukao Singin Na Atok Pagluti Piyo Sa Katang Nea To Atok Tau Katang Luni Gavamao Iloani. Tana Nere Yung Naktu Garoa Kisya Ne Kinao Yaktu Tiki Nea Tinge Man Na Ukao Singin Luti Go Kanga Karni Ukao Sari Lakpabo, Tito Karao Simangman. Tana Ro Kanga can new rato, Tiki Utilang in Nativusuri, Okausu or Simangito. 
man now up to the east of Magatta of the Ragu twenty five and the Oxima Matta. Um, Ukausria Kajara Rakta Bukai, Inui Ukausina, Unorne Padletu Nakilu, Inok to Okadaka to Ildu, Ram Isumaru Bildugin. Amma Romana, Government of Katkosa, how you may know that the Government of Katkosa came as a matter of Piko Yaksamin, Nonaka Kasimayo, Okausing in Nipiluti. They may man is to marry Katakara inui, Okausingan, Pim Mario Laringman, is Katari inui inuptun, Ilin Nak to the new Iloani, Anak Taylor Manu Iloani. Ekaktu iriko iloane makwa kisirima ato ane kala kataktu inu samon inu okaw singin na ato lutupi sokta o katagun na ekhamata inu. Um, tana sanga vigi katay naksi magaro ako um government kun pizza kun nakulugi inu okaw singin na ato luti. Kisiani te me karatu lugo inu luta inu ukaw singa tu sa katagay karatigo atukto yu ukarima on na katagay karatigo gawa makuning na tu inaw ni karatu tin kagasaw yagara kung ma atuk katagtigo karo tigara kung ma atuk katagtigo ta ko ay ni inuk tito tito raksa makatagay ni te me man ah sanga vigilaw si mang negatke ah ikia kiri ko sa kaya katagtu pa ko nagbio kat nera katagtag kari Facebook um sanga bigi qatra rakin o qauti waktu gi inuk tu pita qaqa qangningani atok tongin no yangman te mai ma july nai ngutilugo anga qatigi kita saqya tu kutu saqoti ko o qausi rokto inuk tu tu rokti taw ne angningani pilira gelu no tu um taqqi ga saw ne aktu no kisa ne qauji maluta january 2019 o japan silak jomin um inui ah no naka kaxi ma yo o kausing inu sanga agagwi agagwi yo rangman te me man pang naksima na sung ne aktu inuk tu sakya ron na lo inuk tu sakya ron na silo ne te na kulung wa ko kau yuma yasi imaging ayon isuglo piugi yaga te me man isumagi katataga o akadagliu ko gamamat ko ningang itu um tuwa bayarin nesta Nik jo pilih ayah yun nak tanga, awak kalah nga. Kiko nukia ngai sanga kan nga kami juga. Aksual gawa makusuk ke sungung mata. Amaru naru nai komad nga silap juang men. Kacaman nak jua tak kat tama agu tama nunak kak si majuin. Nusilap juang silap juang ni pilihin. Teh mai man agane take ngau katau si majuaga man New York men. Nildar beka on nalaga ma inu o kausinga tamiksa na nildar o tunga kila mikuruga ro pemario gilaw sa ganado na si kana katutunga nunabu pildugo inu o kausinga tunga bigyaw siya ninga ni nado na si yaya kang nagsugi kana tapo isu magidugo kana gawa matukat ko kana ta o kang nagpan nunak inu o kausinga tunga bigyaw yun nunabu mi te man o kang nagpata Kina o yaku tigo ikayaw na kasubid lugi piyot piyot sa tao katakot lugi inuin isumagilugo kana tao ilone non nabut unong nakpangong mata inuk tutusun non nabum mis tuti ila iman na isumagitu na tulo um o katakot tara sa kadlunat tigo public majority speakers Tak mana nari yang nutu nang upak kuta surlo nufan lan nan labu dor mau kuta unong nak pangu yuk kiku kanong ukau sakapan kebet mau kuta unong nak pak kanong ukau sakapan adzigin itu nak katang mata kisane nuna bermasa nuna unong nak pak ukau sakatu ini ukau singin ni tak mereka rasa juga gawa matu kaku ini saksi tiara saksi mangin mengata nak akau katang kita. Um, pang next naman na sumne aktibo akawo ginakta sa ni 2019 min um, o kaos pa kawo masilak jawmen nung nakakaks mayo o kaos ng nusang haragata um, kakekwani um, akin nang mayo taksan ni iman na sakit si yung mayigun mikitju garak sumne atok tao yung nakto may o kaks mayo ni inukto sungo yung a ubaro ni inukto ilin nakto nga ubaro ni tapani iglumin inukto sungo yung 
upi usuk kanak kuga ruak tu. Inu 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 ilo kau sinimne atuk kanak kata kuga ruak tu. Aji ging itu nello pang nak si mana sini aku tu agaru ruak tu min. Ante mak agaru tu mak tu mak tang nak kau kerja agaru ruak tu min tau bunga New York mau pang nak si mana sini aku tu tak kaya tak kaya aku tu kanak kau malu tu inu ilo kau sinimne. Agaknya orang tu, ialah agak juga ya tu nasi kacang tu tu semang mayun. Kini awak yang tiga ikan yutik sana, ini ini ni agak agak masih letok sambil mon. Ikan yutik saya katang ni aku dua thousand five hundred min. Tangan nasi kacang saya rok sabun. Amaru ini ni agak agak mayu si letok sambil mon itu berwa. Ikan ayam, ikan ayam tahu nang ni mon. Ikan yutau yun nak yak tu me ini ni agak mayu agak min. Ika yu ika yu sa katang na ang million one thousand min. Amalun na dun na si yung madunga. Ikakto yung biko um unnag lug unnag lug biko um ikakto yee. Na dun na si lao makibalak ha ilin na ang katulog si mayun inuin kibalak ha makangeslin ang min ilalio jaw si mang matago. Um, ilin na ang katulog si Mayuno nung nakakakak si Mayuno. Kinaw yung tigo, ikayok daw yung nang nakasutin. Saan na naroon na ako matuloy nakasaka aksuwaro, pimakiw gilaw ka tigo, kubiya gilaw ka tigo, lutaan na sakit daw man. Kingulak pa may ukaw sa kayo mayaka akitiyutin, pikutin, iso magiglug. Ukaw sa katak si Maga tigo, katamay yung luta. Agane kita mo ning ato o kaus sa karaw matul the Great Bay Port and Road agaw yat tinil sa mani ipat sa o kaus sa karaw sa kibal ng mga ato mo kano o karaw ng min ka ikayok ikayok kan ng mga ato kaw yu mayu kaw yu mayu ina lutero inu inu ng ngan ni amigas amigas sa katagata kisuri mani tako a kiti yuti pilugin at jigging ito ito lang takbut kang niluatun um Ilin na ba kao ng loak dun? Pingwag ba kao ng loak dun? At jiging ito yun na iso magigigaw kiso ito yun na tayo yaw pa pa kao ng loak ng tine na doon na siyo na kaya ako siyo na doon ang ito. Tay may man iso magigatak sa ka-ITK kuning nga sa matiluta. Kasama sa katun sa katigig luta o kao sa katakaya kakok siyo at ito yun tine. Gawa matukat ko tusak sa katakot siyo puigo kubita at ito katakot siyo. Isu magiglugo kalo na nituli pekakto sa utya katakseman ni kung matagawa matukat ko nuli ika yoktao katakseman ni kung tilugin ubago ukiyok takto mi utao yutigon ika yoktao si mangin natari tay man natigil um niyugigaro ako kano kano ilaring nakbukya ulda uwe o kaos ka kama artic policy framework kano ilingarigaro ang mga naruna naruna kaya ko yingman Kisah ni isni riu ke kat terok tak teku teku nak kai sak kecicikan nakun naik cikun in ukiok tak cok inu inu nangan tu kau ngeluar nengan ni tu aki cuyut ni ami garuar nengin ni ami garuar nengin ni nado nak si garuar tu dengan nado nak betul ngabi kudu ta tu kai mau tak kecuin nakun nangin mega tergawa matu kat kun ni Um, ika yoga sa katang mayigun. Iso magito yung naglago na rin na yung mayaka agagawin yung yung ika yoga sa mayigun. Kino yung kutigo. Nung nabot si Bunik sa bot ko, um, ilin niya sa kutingin. Iglo, iglo, iglo ka katang mata araw amin. At okto ako siya. Say, may katak si Maniko garang mata man na rin. Pekalak, pekalak ilutin ng minakalak ilutin. Pinayang mata. Um, agago tamak si uta si uti ni kati matindu sa ang ilaw sa magatigo. Um, maro, isang ni sarili ng mon, iglo ko sa kanya manunabo iluan eh. Saan na rin, ang ngayon ko ito sa iluan eh, naroon na si matiak din. Siya ka rin ako dugo, agago eh. So, ni paet ngayon ako sa kataw ng minak si mang man. Um, ino iti na kutingan ni nga si maluta, kinaw yang mito sa nabaya si mayigun, ah, si napildo ko. Amaru ipagsasaw lo David o kaos ka daw makina o yakutigun MTI ikayok si Mayuk daw kibandak inoy katudya katigingin no. Say may karoak tildugo kao yung magama inoy ito na kutingin ni nga si Mayun ikayok nang ningin ni pilir katigigun nang ningin ni sana kiyo yung sangin na kayo naktabun kisya ni 
Kumita Luki, are there any questions for Aluki in her presentation? Hearing none, now I'd like to turn to the National Inuit Youth Council and Binky Anderson for your presentation. Um, just wanted to recognize Natan first for all your contributions to the National Inuit Youth Council. Um, so we are a team of six or seven. Uh, Ruth couldn't be here. She's our president. So I'm here for her and the council. Um, imagine our roles for Inuit population where youth make up the highest percentage. Our members do programming in their own communities, selflessly contributing to the youth in the regions. Our work is volunteer, as our contributions come straight from passion, determination, and inspiration to do better for youth, influence, influences like people in this table, um, and motivation, even though we do have our plates full, I'd like all of you to recognize this from NYC. Um, you, Ruth is unavailable. She's in Peru, as stated in terms of reference. I'll step up as acting president for National Inuit Youth Council until her return. We have not yet appointed leadership for vice president. We're facing some changes in the council regards to turnover. Alicia Arakutak, former president of Hagtu Youth Council in Nunavik region, ended her term just recently. I'd like to recognize all her hard work for Hagtu in Nunavik and NYC. We're awaiting new leadership and we'll hear back once the elections in Nunavik are done. We will see who will be representing Nunavik on NYC at that time. Uh, Ashley Alpaluktak Burton, former youth program coordinator and representative for the Kivalik region, completed her position. Daisy Panika has returned and once again represents Kivalik region. We are a fairly new team. I was appointed in January when we had our face to face. Presley Taylor is new, uh, fairly new too, which Sarah Jenke formerly held. And we have a new youth coordinator at ITK Nicole APT. Uh, priorities for Inuit youth in Canada, mental health and suicide, culture and language, youth empowerment and education. This is of great significance since these priorities are created at biannual summit. This connects us and brought advice from all over Inuit Nunangat. Our democracy has all been consensus and this highlights how we covered a unified voice for youth. Our work that we do links us to these priorities set by youth. Our youth leader connects us, and in her capacity, she has participated in many of ITK's endeavors, such as the ICPC, and brought our youth issues forward on these tables. Um, we participate and involve ourselves in many uh, events and I don't have the numbers, but we do get invitations from um, committees like the ECCC and many other external ones that like to involve the youth voice. Um, last summer, the National Inuit Youth Summit was held in Maine. I know you guys had an update from youth in your last AGM and seen the video. Um, the National Inuit Youth Summit will be happening in Cambridge Bay, Pacific Inuit region. And we are currently figuring out our planning stages for this biennial summit. 
and start planning once we all bring Inuit youth together once again. Um, we had discussed creating a strategy for NIYC, which will encompass a roadmap with strategic, measurable, realistic, and timely goals towards focusing on our priority areas, mental health and suicide, culture and language, and youth empowerment and engagement. It's a new way forward, as I'd like to see it, because we do still need to figure out action. As these events we participate in is only important if we can see grassroots level impact on well-being of our Inuit youth. We like to decide how we see things for our future. This will be significant how we can better support our priorities, unify our common issues, diverse regional opinions, distinct way, because there's more that combines us that divides us in our region. This development of this particular strategy plan, the outcome will be instrumental in specific actionable, reasonable, timely way of checkpoints to follow on this road and provide accountability to our commitments, where we will identify solutions in solid way instead of saying, why isn't people doing this? Why aren't they doing that? Our youth continue to suffer in silence. We like to move our realities forward and improve. But one thing to keep in mind is we will build more successes over time. When you hear our youth perspective, you'll see that we, we long for meaningful change in our lives. And we still continue to see young people who are by uh, TB and keeping in mind our place, um, doing enough, are you doing enough to do your part for our realities as youth um, and fulfill our youth priorities. So that's the update for NIYC. We, are, we will be planning a face-to-face -face meeting um, for planning for the summit in Cambridge Bay, and we will be planning for our strategy plan. Thank you. Are there any questions, comments in relation to the NIYC presentation? Dwayne? Yeah. Thanks for the uh, update on your activities. Uh, if you could just give us a heads up now so we can properly plan and prepare our uh, youth representation. What dates that you're proposing for Cambridge Bay? It will be summer 2019. The dates haven't been combed out yet, but once we are having our face-to-face, -face, that's the first thing that we will plan, date, time, location, etc. But the location is in Cambridge Bay, yes. Now I'd like to turn to Pagtutit Inuit Women of Canada, Rebecca Kudlu. Pagtutit has enjoyed a successful and productive 2017-18 fiscal year. The organization's basic operating capacity was increased to total to a total of 1.4 million from 448,000 for, for the physical year. We hope to secure a five-year agreement going forward. Total project and core funding for 2017-18 was approximately 2.1 million. And the organization ended the physical year with a small surplus. With that money, um, our organizational heart chart has been revised to support the increased activity. Um, the most significant change is the Pauk Duty now has a specific communications program and staff, with, which is already showing results. We have come up with a um, Quarterly newsletter, Shulakpita, which will uh, 
and there will be our updates on our projects and new things that are we doing. Um, we've also been working on our uh, with um, INAC officials to implement our uh, memorandum of, of understanding with them. This uh, memorandum of understanding, uh, the primary ob objective is to work with the federal government in a more coordinated manner to address any specific priorities. The bulk of its activities are implementing annual proposal-based projects those projects are grouped broadly into the themes below, which I will mention. Um, all public pro projects are guided by advisory committees comprised of representatives from the four regions and specific subject matter experts. In our violence and abuse prevention, um, The National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls have continued to work to take a lot of our time um, and resources. How could it has a standing uh, with the inquiry in partnership with Shetokrit and Anaukatigi Tumingit in Nunachiarut and the Ottawa. Um, Inuit Children's Center. The Manitoba Inuit Association has recently applied as a partner. At this time, Pauktut, it has no financial resources to support its continued and essential participation with the inquiry. Additional funding has been requested from both the inquiry and the federal government but we do not expect to receive any additional funds. The executive and the board have all um, have and will continue to discuss any possible options to continue to participate in the inquiry. Our project engaging men and boys to reduce violence against women and girls have been very popular. Um, we're on a phase two of our project to engage men and boys to reduce violence. Um, during 2017-18, we helped training, train the trainer sessions in each of the regions to encourage and guide men to use their uh, the recent toolkit that we did in phase one. These sessions proved to be so popular that we were invited to hold one more uh, workshop in additional community in Nunavut and the government of Nunavut supported the particip participation of some of their staff. We have conducted a survey on the current knowledge attitudes and behavior that supports the, cur the currently highest rate of violence in the country as part of the project. Primarily findings have been compiled. The findings will be analyzed and utilized in the mapping of the other related projects. Our Believe Ask Connect series, we have produced additional videos and at the aim to raising awareness about the impacts of uh, witnessing violence in the home on children. You may have see, seen the PSAs on, um, Jemima. sorry, <laughs> my mind blank, APTN uh, and CBC. The first video, Thin Eyes, contains a message from all adults to talk with children to protect them from abuse. The new video, More Than You Know, has been viewed approximately 81,000 times 
on the Park Future Facebook, Facebook page. The development of the next phase of the work has been funded for 2018-19. Additional messages will be developed with the advice of the project's advisory committee. Study of gender violence and shelter service needs across Inuit Nunangat. INAC has committed to funding phase two of our project to assess actual costs of related um, to violence and the use of the need for shelters and second stage housing across Inuit Nunangat. Violence is costly. The cost to Medivac, a uh, woman that been abused, time for away from work, um, all those are costly, very costly. I was recently, uh, a few months ago, at a shelter needs conference in Ottawa. I was in a panel. Um, and I made a point of the lack of 70% 70, 70 of our Inuit communities, Inuit in, Nunangat in lack shelters. To make the point across, we also live in a very severe weather, um, like 30, 40 below. And I made the point of, if you could imagine, trying to get away from uh, being abused middle of the night and it's 30, 40 below and there's nowhere to go. And you have to dress yourself and your kids to get to go out because uh, if your spouse doesn't kill you, the weather might. So these are the challenges that women face when they're trying to get away from abuse. Um, We were promised that there will be funding available for more shelters in the north. So we're hoping um, that will come true. Um, our socioeconomic development um, department has been very successful in uh, working on Inuit women in uh, business. Um, that has been very popular also. Um, in our health department, Inuit Cancer Project, um, we did a project on My Journey resources. Um, in Inuktitut, cancer is usually something that when people hear somebody has cancer, it's terminal. Um, but we want women, especially, to be hopeful that they can be cured and what kind of resources are available. Uh, we also did a terminology where um, in all dialects, that could help a patient, the interpreter, the doctors and nurses. You know, uh, when a woman goes down for ca cancer treatment, um, they need help in explaining things to their doctor. And um, it's very hard when you can't communicate to your doctor how you're feeling, or, you know, and it helps to say, it, there's a diagram where um, of a body and say this is where I'm hurting. So it's to assist um, cancer patients in their journey. We also have a checkup project partnered with Dr. Alexander King at the University of Saskatchewan to scale up an enhanced Nunavik checkup project and um, this project is to help, um, it's a communication campaign launched by Nunavik Board of Health and Social Services. 
that uses social marketing and social media to influence the social norms around screening. The National Inuit Sexual Health Network um, uh, has recently finalized Ikayongnuk, meaning the act of helping, an Inuit cascade of care framework for sexually transmitted infection and bloodborne infections. Um, we want people to feel comfortable. We also understand that um, people who have been sexually abused might not want um, to go to the health center to be checked. And um, this is to just assist um, and understand that um, because it's very high in Inuinunangat, uh, the STD, um, sexually transmitted and bloodborne infections. So this is to assist people who might want to go, you know, for a checkup. We also have um, naturally curious talking to youth about sexual health and uh, transmitted sexually transmitted and bloodborne infections. This project goal was to increase adults' capacities to support and communicate with Inuit youth about healthy sexual behavior with a view to significantly reduce relevance of high-risk behaviors, including the uh, spread of sexually transmitted and blend-borne infections across Inuit Nunanit. Um, there's a uh, information booklet, PowerPoint presentation, short videos, and community presentation guide, social media strategy for Facebook. So all our websites are listed in my report. Uh, I'll stop there for now. Queen Nami. Nakomik Becky, are there any questions, comments for Paukiti? Andy? I have a question regarding that uh, economic development, social economic development uh, project that you guys were um, taking initiative uh, for the communities. I know that uh, at one point uh, you were helping to go to Nunavik. Um, how is that pro uh, project? Uh, is it is it in continuation? Is there, if uh, Nunavik uh, communities, especially uh, the bigger ones, um, we're interested in uh, um, taking part in these uh, projects. Uh, what, what will be the uh, procedure? Thank you. We also connect mentors uh, for women who want to go into business to have a mentor who's already in business and successful. So they have somebody to ask questions because it's really hard to run a business on your own. I know um, I did it <laughs> when you have a business up north. Um, there's not very many resources to help you out. Uh, so it's been quite successful, Queen. Mm -hmm. Johannes? Um, uh, Becky, uh, uh, I will tell you that I will association you that I will tell you that I will We came out yesterday. The uh, LIA did uh, help interpreter translators in uh, putting together a proposal in uh, in, in developing a um, a medical terminology workshop, and uh, 
and, and so uh, with someone like Rita Anderson, uh, who led the workshop, uh, interpreters um, and translators were trained to uh, help uh, Indians uh, with uh, uh, medical issues. And, 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 uh, uh, those people in training uh, were made to visit uh, places like Goose Bay and St. John's and, and to actually uh, going to the hospitals uh, and, and speak to doctors. And, and, and so something like that, you know, I, I believe uh, can happen you know, where you are. Okay. <laughs> um <laughs> Apa <laughs> Uh, Fumika, are there any other comments? If there are none, there's one last presentation uh, ICC Canada would like to present as well, Monica L. Paneo. <laughs> How you may know Parukusi Takoa ICC could Canada Minya Sutin, Akago to Mark Sutin Mining, Katin Manakalamata, July fifteen, until the good take a new cabin me, take a niti luta, uh, Nehwak Tao Rama, Tama, um, Kuvet Chakua, Ipig Lugulutana, Kago is it a make, uh, it's about beginning after all. The 